Hi everyone, so in this video I want to show you how you can set up authorization in your next application without using Clerk that is compatible with the Edge Runtime. We're going to be using the Next Auth Beta version for this. Let me just do a quick demo on what our aim is. I have two pages currently. This is the home page and then I have a dashboard page. To go to the dashboard page, I want to be logged in. Currently, I don't have that functionality and I will try to implement that functionality that is compatible with the Edge Runtime. I've created a video showing you how to implement auth authorization in Next, but that is not compatible with the Edge Runtime. So in this video, that is what I'm going to try and implement. To get started, let's install a package uh, for Next Auth. npm install Next dash auth. Here's the new thing. You, we have to do npm install next auth at beta. This is going to install a version that's not released yet, but it is compatible with the edge runtime and it's version 5. I believe it's going to be released in the future at some point. So for now, this is the command that we have to use. Press enter and now it's going to install it. Nice. Once the package is installed, then inside the next uh, in then inside the app directory, what we want to do is, let me just zoom in. We want to create the following route, API slash auth slash catch all syntax for next auth. Once we have created that folder, we need to create a file in there called route.ts. Once we have created that, we'll come back to this later. Let me zoom out again. And inside the root directory of our uh, project, we need to create uh, let me just create a lit library folder, lib, and inside that, create auth.ts file. Once we have created this auth.ts file, this is where we're going to actually implement our, our setup, our authorization. So, as always, uh, import next auth from next auth. And then we are going to destructure some stuff from here, from next auth. Passing an empty object in this for now. But uh, one of the things that we're going to take out from this is auth. And another thing is handlers. These handlers are get and post. Once that's done, we need to import Google provider because I want to implement authorization by Google provider. So what you do is you do import Google provider from next auth and then providers slash google nice and inside this empty object we're going to have a key providers that is going to be an array and inside that array we're going to put our google provider this google provider is going to take in a client id client id that is an environment variable. So I have named that environment variable process.env.google underscore client underscore ID as string. Import that. And another thing is client secrets. Process.env.google underscore client underscore secret. That's also going to be a string. If you want to know how to actually get these client ID and client secrets, you can watch my previous video of implementing authorization. But in this video, I'm only going to show you the quick setup. Another thing that we need to set up uh, is a secret. That is going to be process.env.auth underscore secret. You can generate these secrets. That's also shown in my previous video. I can, I can show those two for now. And this is what those two look like. This is what the auth secret looks like. You can generate this using a command in your terminal. You can watch my previous video if you're not sure how to do that. But these are the next two environment variables that I've set up. Auth URL, which is localhost for working locally, slash API slash auth, and then this auth secret. So once that's done, you save this file and then you go to our route.ts that we had created to export the get and post handlers that we exported from our auth.ts file these ones okay so all you have to do is export get and post from and now you just need to find the that directory go back go back from here and slash lib slash auth 
Also, because we want it to be compatible with the edge runtime, you also do explore const runtime is equal to edge. And that's mostly it. Now we can import the session from on any of our pages. For example, now let me show you how it's done. This is pretty much most of the setup done. Go to our dashboard, page.tsx file. And here, first of all, create this as an async function. And now we can do auth is equal, I mean, session is equal to await auth. No, sorry, this isn't correct. You do await auth. And now what we want to do is, if there is no session, we want to redirect our user. This redirect is coming from next slash navigation. You want to redirect the user to slash API slash auth slash sign in. This is going to take the user to the sign in page. Now we are pretty much done, but let's say on the dashboard, once we are logged in, let's display the user's email session dot user dot email. Okay. And also just to be safe, since this is this application is going to run on the edge runtime, you do export const runtime equal to edge for any page that's going to be on the edge runtime. So save everything up and now let's try to log in. Here I am on the home page. Now let's test this. Here I'm on the home page and if I click on dashboard, it should take me to the sign in page. There we go. It takes me to the sign in page and now I can log in using Google. Just to prove that it works, boxbyte.dev at gmail.com. Let me try to log in. Put in your password. And after successfully logging in, it takes me to the home page. Now, if I go on dashboard, it should display my email. And that's what it does. That's how you set up the auth that is compatible with the edge runtime. Bear in mind that this package is in beta, but it's going to be released soon. It's the, five, it's the version 5.0. This auth does not require you to use Clerk or any other third party service. This is how you can set up auth by yourself that is compatible with the edge runtime. Hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching.